Hi everybody, I hope you're well. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my top five items which you can shoot through to make creating unique portraits like these really simple. So, let's crack on. Now with each of the items which I talk about in this video, I have at least one video on my channel where you can see me using the item on a live shoot and I will link to each of those videos in the description. With each item I will also give you a top tip as well because it's not quite as straightforward as simply just shooting through the item but I'll give you all the information that you need to help you create images like these. Now, when I shoot through things like I'm going to show you in this video, I virtually always do so using my 35mm prime lens. Now, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you may already know that the 35mm prime lens is my favourite lens. I mainly love it because I think it is the perfect lens for documentary photographs on a wedding day. But another reason I love to use it so much is because I find it is the perfect lens for shooting through things which I place in front of the lens. So my first top tip is going to be to use a 35mm lens if you want to take the creative photographs like I'm showing you in this video. Also, I personally find that I get the best results when I shoot at the widest aperture possible. I just find that if you shoot at a more narrow aperture, the item which you're shooting through will just start to become less abstract and more sharp in the frame, which is something that I personally don't really like. So shooting at the widest aperture that you can, such as f1.8, f2, something like that, in my opinion, will give you the best results. So almost all the photographs that you see in this video, if not every single one, will have been taken on a 35mm prime lens at the widest aperture possible. So item number one is the teardrop crystal. I have a few of these crystals and each one is slightly different. But as you'll see as I rotate the crystal round, it has really nice colours in it and that can give you really cool and colourful foreground bokeh. Now to take these photographs, I place the crystal really close to the camera lens, like this. So it's almost touching. Now my top tip when shooting through the teardrop crystal is that you want to make sure that there is also a light source on the crystal itself as that way you're going to bring out the colours in the crystal really well. I just normally use the torch on my phone to light the crystal. Now if you watch this video you're going to see me shooting through the teardrop crystal just as I've described. Now item number two is the fractal filter. As I've mentioned many times on my channel, this filter gives an effect which you will either really like or really hate. But personally, I find that in the right situation, the effect that this fractal filter can give is really cool. Now I use the fractal filter by holding it around six or seven inches from the camera lens, around this sort of distance. Now my top tip for using the fractal filter is to take quite a few images when using it because it can be quite tricky to get the filter in just the right place for the best effect. So I tend to take lots of photographs with this whilst ever so slightly moving the filter forwards and backwards. And I then make sure that I've got an image that I'm pleased with before I put the filter away. And for the fractal filter, this is a good video to watch if you'd like to see exactly how I use the fractal filter to create this creative photograph of a bride and groom. Number three on the list is an item that I've only used a couple of times so far, but I found that it can give incredible foreground bokeh, and that is tin foil. I haven't used a tin foil at a real wedding yet, but I can't wait to do so because I love the bokeh that it can give. Now you want to scrunch up the tin foil like this because in doing so, it's going to give you all these little areas of shininess and that is where the foreground bokeh is going to come from. And again, if you'd like to see exactly how I use the tin foil to make this photograph, then this is the video. And just as I showed you in that video, my top tip for shooting through tin foil is again to make sure that you light up the tin foil with a light source, such as a speed light or a video light. And when you do that, this is going to give you some really cool foreground bokeh and it's going to make for epic portraits. Item number four on my list is the crystal ball prism. This is a completely round ball shaped prism that when you place it in front of your 35mm lens, just as I showed you earlier with the teardrop crystal, it's going to give you a really cool effect that looks like fireworks. 
Now my top tip for using the crystal ball prism is to use it in a really dark environment with maybe one or two small light sources. Fairy lights for example can work really well with this crystal. And again I use this crystal when I'm shooting at the widest aperture I can on my 35mm prime lens and in this video you can see me using this prism at a real wedding to create this bride and groom portrait. And last but not least are these fairy lights. Now I must admit I don't use fairy lights very often but I do like the effect that they can give and in this video you can see how I used these fairy lights to create this photograph. Now what I really like about these fairy lights, as with all the fairy lights that I own, is that they are battery powered. So you don't have to plug them in to use them and that makes them really portable and far easier to use. So my advice if you are looking to buy any fairy lights for creative photographs is to make sure that like these they are battery powered. And my top tip for shooting through fairy lights is that you want to use them in a dark environment. If it's too bright, the effect that they can give can just look a bit strange, I think. But in the right situation, when it's dark, they can help you to create some really cool creative portraits. So there you go, my favourite five items to shoot through for creative wedding portraits. As always, if you have any questions about anything which I've covered in this video, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.